In a small village called Kaptich in Eldoret sits the Lakata Dairies. It is one of the success stories in dairy farming that has turned into a successful business empire. My name is Laban Tanui. Uh, I am a dairy farmer. We started dairy farming uh, way back in the year 2014. When we got married, we were privileged to get some uh, gifts in form of cows during our wedding from friends, from relatives who gave us about six cows in total. And um, by and large, I didn't have an intention of doing dairy farming in my life. But when I saw this opportunity of the gift that we got, it really interests me on dairy. And I started now uh, going through YouTube, going through the internet, just trying to study how dairy farming is all about. The first income that I got from that small amount of uh, the, the cows, we managed to get about, I think it was about 15,000 shillings, which really motivated us that, yeah, indeed, Kumbe, you can do dairy farming and make some money out of it. 2016 is when, when I got a serious interest on dairy farming. A friend of mine approached me, uh, who was a member of Kenya, um, Eldoret Dairy Farmers Association. And uh, being a member of Eldoret Dairy Farmers Association, at that time they were importing cows, live cows from Netherlands and, and South Africa. And I took the risk because uh, we decided to take a loan at the bank. I took a loan at Family Bank and uh, they managed to finance about 10 animals at that time. And these cows were imported, pedigree cows from South Africa. We managed to get the first yield of about uh, over 30 liters per cow. And that was a shock to us because we didn't know that you can make that amount of milk from one cow. One cow could produce what six cows was producing. All of them came when they were in calf. And we were very lucky that the 10 gave birth to aphas, all of them. And you can imagine these were pedigree cows. 10 cows giving birth to 10 aphas, that takes you to 20 cows. Plus what we had in the farm, we managed to shoot to 30 cows almost within a span of uh, one year. The production of milk on dairy farms and the processing of milk and milk products at dairy plants make up the dairy industry. However, this is only possible if good dairy management practices have been applied. Some of the factors that farmers need to consider in programs include breeding, milking, feeding, cleaning management, manure handling and disease management. We start our work as early as 3 a.m. in the morning. It's cleaning of the, the cow shed. Feeding of the cows also is throughout the, the day. And milking also, we do like three milkings in a day. Sometimes we do four, four times because we have very high lactating cows that produce up to almost 60, 70 liters. So those ones have to be emptied. The herd has to be emptied all the time. In order to successfully maintain high production in a dairy farm, a farmer needs to consider key factors such as cow nutrition, reproduction, comfort, and milking. We feed our cows with um, three different rations. First, we have maize silage, which is the main feed in the farm. So we feed with maize silage. So this, the department that does feeding, of course, they get the, the feed from the, 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 the silage pit uh, mix it now with the, um, with the dairy meal. Of course, the concentrate is very important. A cow has to have, needs to have a balanced diet for it to produce. The, the feeding trough has to have feed throughout the day, throughout the night. A very important factor here also is apart from the feed alone, the cow comfort is very important. The cow has to sit on a place that is very comfortable because without cow comfort, it will also affect the production of the cows and also in terms of productivity. The other segment would be um, now milking. Milking is very key because for the high lactating cows, you've got to empty the udder almost more frequently. When you go to Europe, uh, they have got this milking, the, they have got the, the robotic milking machines. Robotic milking machines, the cow is able to be milked like almost 10 times in a day. Because the more they feel like the herder is full, they get to the, the robotic um, milking machine and they're able to be emptied. 
Here in Africa, especially in our place, Kenya, we are not yet there in terms of robotic milking because of many other many challenges that we face. However, what we do is we, we, we milk our cows using the normal milking machines that we have. We are lucky to have Dilaval as a company, a South African company, who are really supplying us with the milking machinery. Before you milk a cow, first of all, you need to prepare that animal. And how you prepare them is you put them in the milking, milking, uh, milk, mil, milking parlor. In the milking parlor, they've got to have something that is really of interest to them. And for us, we saw that the, the dairy concentrates, that's the, the, that's the dairy milk, which we mix in our own farm with our own composition. We feed these cows slowly, slowly. They get to have like, uh, depending with the production per cow also, you cannot give like two kilos per cow, no. You give them as per their productivity levels. A cow that does like uh, 25 liters by one milking can get even up to five kilos. Whereas the one that does like five kilos per milking, you can give them like half a kilo. At the farm level, farmers are required to adopt good dairy farming practices in animal health, milking hygiene, nutrition, environment, and socioeconomic management so as to produce safe and quality milk from healthy animals since these practices underpin the production of milk that satisfies the highest expectations of the food industry and consumers. Very important again is now preparing the udder. So the udder, before you start inserting the milking machine, you've got to prepare the udder by cleaning the, the udder, the whole udder system. And by not just the teeth alone, but the entire udder of the cow has to be clean. So the milking cans also has to be very clean. We have got a department that does cleaning alone of the milking cans. Their work is to make sure that every other time the milking cans are well, well cleaned by using hot water. For the feeds, of course, uh, we, the only way we are managing our farm is we plan ahead. Like right now we are planning what is the feed that we should have for the next one and a half years. So of importance here is to have enough feed for not only one year, but you can even extend for about two years. A small scale farmer can break even by feeding cows with forages that are readily available on the farm. Farmers are encouraged to plant lucerne, napier, sweet potato vines, sorghum and other trees or shrubs for the benefit of the livestock. For farmers who are really, they have small farms and they want to do more feed, I would advise you that to try and think outside the box by ensuring that they have enough adequate feed by hiring more farms outside their farm. Our main feed, the composition of the feed, which is 80%, is maize silage. Whereas the concentrates, which is actually the dairy meal, will get about 10%. And then the others, of course, will go to the minerals. Milk processes are a link between dairy farmers and the milk market. For milk processes, the quality of raw milk is the primary factor determining the quality of milk. Therefore, farmers have to ensure that the raw milk is free of debris and sediment, free of off flavor and abnormal color and odor, low in the bacterial count, free of chemicals like antibiotics and detergents, and should be of normal composition and acidity. We do our own tests in the farm by ensuring that whatever feed we give to our cows, we've, do, we've done a pre-test on the, the aflatoxin levels, for example. You know, any, any challenge that is within the feed, we're able to address it before we feed to our cows. Because whatever you give to your cow is able to reflect on the milk production. Despite dairy farming being a lucrative venture, farmers also face a lot of challenges. Management is the biggest challenge that farmers have. Um, but if I would ad advise our farmers that dedicate your time to the farm. Make sure that every day you're able to see how is your cow doing. How are the cows being fed? How have they slept in terms of cow comfort? The other big, biggest challenge that we get as farmers is of course because whatever we feed our cows with, the challenge is we don't have the raw materials. For example, in terms of sourcing for the, raw, for the proteins, which is actually the canola, we've got, uh, we've got sunflower, we've got cotton, all those ones we don't have them in Kenya. We import them from our neighbors, uh, Uganda for example. And many a times they get to us here, they get to us here in terms of quality 
they could be having a lot of aflatoxin levels. And again, it affects what we feed our cows with. And again, within the, the feeding sector, the people who are the players who are selling this animal feed, they do a lot of, um, yeah, what can I say? There is no honest in terms of uh, what we sell as uh, traders. You can find that even for the maize aflatoxin levels, which are really not good for human consumption, they're, they're in the market, they're being sold. Despite the challenges, Mr. Tanui, director of Lakata Farm Dairies, says there are opportunities that farmers can tap into and break even in their dairy farming business. Fellow farmers, is, uh, you've got to have the numbers so that you make good margins. For example, in our farm, we are, we are I would say we are at 50% margin because the 50% goes back to the feed and then 50% is what we can say we are, we are making in terms of, uh, in, in terms of uh, profitability. Again, what I would say is farming has money, for sure. Farming has money, especially dairy farming. It just needs proper management, uh, proper continuous follow-up, and again, ensure that you don't do shortcuts. Have the proper genetics also in the farm, the cows that when you feed, they can give you as high as 60 liters, it's possible. We believe that the, oh, the fresh and so the whole stains, of course, produce more than the other animals. Eh? But uh, what I would say, not, not only, it's not only the breed, it's not only the genetics, but it comes down to what do we feed this cow with, of importance. Because we've tried testing the ones that we imported from uh, abroad, South Africa and even Netherlands. Eh? But uh, we've got our own, the local ones. I would say, at the moment, they are at par in terms of production. The local ones are even doing better than the ones we got from abroad. In the midst of the challenges, Lakata Farm Dairies hopes to hit 2,000 litres per day and move into value addition. This year alone, we are trusting God that we'll be able to do about 2,000 litres per day. And in the next five years, we've got a plan that we've got to eat like uh, our vision is to get to the 10,000 mark, uh, 10,000 litres per day mark, so that now we can do our own value addition in the farm. Because we believe that with value addition, you're able to make more money compared to just being a, a primary producer. The Kenya Dairy Board is mandated to regulate, develop and promote the dairy industry in Kenya. Besides inspection and licensing of milk handling premises, and surveillance on the quality and safety of milk and milk products along the dairy value chain, the board also builds the capacity of stakeholders and facilitates trade to support the growth of the industry. Kenya Dairy Board has really been very, has really helped us to grow in our farm. They've been empowering us in terms of, uh, you know, reaching out to farmers, sensitizing them on good genetics that they need to have, of course, and of course, uh, in terms of quality-based payment system, Kenya Dairy Board has played a very critical role. According to Mr. Tanui, there is hope in dairy farming and farmers should never give up. There is money in dairy farming farmers. Never give up. Mbele Ikosawa.